Max Kaiser, how will the downgrades affect Italy and Spain if they want to get loans? Well, first of all, I think it's important to remember that uh, just a, a year ago or so, the rating agencies were telling the European nations that they needed to impose austerity or their ratings would be cut. So the European nations imposed austerity, and as a result, their economies are shrinking. So the rating agencies are coming back and saying, well, we're going to cut your ratings because your economies are shrinking because of the austerity measures that we recommended. Remember, these are the same rating agencies that only a few years ago were giving securitized packages of collateralized debt obligations that were 98% triple C rated junk, a double A rating equivalent to the highest possible sovereign debt rating. So clearly the rating agencies themselves are doing somebody's bidding uh, my, my guess is that they're doing the bidding of the hedge funds and the private equity groups and Wall Street who need something new to trade to make the same kind of bonuses that they made over the past few years. So by downgrading sovereign debt, you increase mm. volatility. This will create enormous trading profits for Wall Street and the city of London. And that's the only real driving force here. The, the economies themselves have cash. That's not the problem. The issue is that they're being occupied by traders and private equity and hedge funds who are playing with these countries' economies like toys, and people are getting hurt, but no, there's no political will to stop it. Let's speak about the French economy now, because we know, of course, that the downgrading has also included France. How would it affect uh, the French economy? Of course, we're ahead of the, its first large-scale bond auction we're going to be expecting on Thursday as well. Well, the uh, French... Uh, cost of funding today got cheaper. The bonds rallied on this news from the rating agencies. So that should tell you the disconnect between the rating agencies and reality. Anyone who places any stock in the rating agencies is, is, is an idiot because any European nation can issue a rating opinion on U.S. debt and say, well, it's really triple B minus. It's really double B minus. It's really mm -hmm. junk. Any, any nation can do that. Uh, and so th the fact that they don't shows you incredible uh, asymmetry in the global banking system to favor a very small clique of hedge funds in the city and on mm. Wall Street who are simply playing trading games with these countries' sovereign debt. Unfortunately, people are getting hurt, but they, they, it's a collateral right. damage that they don't factor into their equations. Let's just refer here to something that's been said by the IMF's deputy managing director, and it's been in the news today, Max Kaiser. He said that a rise in liquidity would help banks deal with this crisis. Do you think more fiscal consolidation here is going to help? Well, liquidity is one of those buzzwords that is used uh, to deflect attention from insolvency. Uh, the, the various countries uh, have an insolvency problem brought about by uh, going back to the year 2000 when Greece joined the euro, for example. Goldman Sachs hid billions of dollars worth of debt for them uh, as a precursor to joining the euro, and they set the stage for this crisis. Now people are suing Goldman Sachs for committing financial fraud as they rightfully should. But liquidity or illiquidity is not the issue at all. Uh, that's just used as an excuse to uh, create more debt. Uh, that is used to create more fees. That is used to create more bonuses. The problem is accountability in the banking sector. Until bankers start going to jail for committing financial fraud, the crisis will continue, as I've been saying on this mm. show for four years now. Max Kaiser, first of all, do you think that the euro is indeed doomed? Uh, and uh, would you agree that the impact would be huge, much huger maybe, than the world can now perceive? Well, the euro still has Germany, and Germany benefits from the cheaper euro in its export business. And it's Germany's call. I think Germany will tease this out for as long as it can to get the benefits of a cheaper euro and then come in at the last moment and save the day. Uh, and I think the dollar, the U.S. dollar, is much more problematic. I personally own euros, and I would not touch a U.S. dollar. Now, it's important to remember that uh, up until recently, the markets used to have what are called bond vigilantes. That means that when governments and corporations, or when governments came in and flooded the markets with cash, as they've been doing for the past few years, it would be inflationary, and that would be bad for the bond market. But the governments now are the biggest buyers of bonds. That's called quantitative easing. 
So you no longer have bond vigilantes. So you have no more price signals in the bond market that tell you anything. This is what accounts for people sleeping through this crisis. The only market that seems to be aware of the mm. crisis is the gold market, which continues to make new highs in euros and makes new highs in every single currency last year because the gold traders or the gold vigilantes know that these policies are going to lead to hyperinflation in many countries mm. and that the price of gold will ultimately, against all these currencies, double and triple again.